Hi, my name is Dr. Ted Dickel, and this is the first in a series of tutorial videos on using the MEME parameter calibration software available at the Mississippi State ICME website. This video is going to cover installation and basic uses of the software. First, to get access to the software, you need to go to the MPC wiki page at icme.hpc.msd.edu and you can search for MPC. On that wiki page, it gives details of the latest version of the software, uh, instructions for downloading and installing it, and any publications or additional information on um, the MPC tool. Once you've downloaded it for your uh, preferred operating system, you can run the executable, and you should see the MPC uh, user interface where you're going to be doing all of your interactions with the MPC calibration tool. You'll notice that by default the example library is loaded which has several dozen elements already loaded into it, various potentials for those elements. You could use one of those as your initial template for a potential that you're designing um, or you can start from scratch or make your own. We are going to be in this series of videos looking at a titanium aluminum potential that I've been developing, and so we're going to be using that library as our starting point. To select a different library than the example one, you one need to have already created that library, and then you can go to File, Meme Library File Is, select your library file, and open it. You'll then see now the library has the elements in that library file, in my case, titanium and aluminum. To look at these in more detail, right-click on the ones we're concerned with. We want to do both, so we're going to look at titanium, add titanium, go to aluminum, right-click, add aluminum. So now we see if we right-click again, we can fix elements to titanium and to aluminum. Do that and it will load the library file for those two elements. Next we need to load a parameter file for our potential. Again, I've already written one. Um, MPC does not require any new parameters. There are default values for all the parameters available and anything that you do not have in the parameter file it will simply use the default value. In that case, if you have no parameters that you want to enter, there is an empty parameter file in the examples directory that you can load. Again, I've already written a parameter file, so we can simply load that, and it will import all the parameters from that parameter file. We now have, if we select titanium up here, it gives us all the library entries for titanium. If we change to aluminum, it gives all the library entries for aluminum. You'll also notice that we can now look at particulars of the titanium plus aluminum binary. In addition, in the parameters part of our input window, we have over on the left all the parameters related to individual or combinations of particular elements. And on the right, we have flags that affect how the meme potential actually functions. These will typically usually be default values. You also will not be changing these flags very often, but if you are using a potential from the literature, you want to make sure those agree with the values that they used. So now that we have loaded our potentials, we are going to look in particular at aluminum. So we select aluminum up here. And now we are going to look at a couple of the basic properties that MPC can tell us about this potential. So the first thing we need to do is select the crystal structures that we're going to be interested in for aluminum. For most metals, the structures we're going to look at are going to be FCC, BCC, and HCP. So to do that, we right-click after we've selected aluminum. We can see that our primary structure, it has already automatically selected FCC for us because the, in the library file, it identified aluminum as an FCC metal. We can change the primary structure if we want to. However, typically you can leave that as is. And then we just go and select secondary structures. Our first secondary structure is going to be BCC. And our second is going to be HCP. Once we've done that, we can choose the properties that we want to look at by going to Plot. Again, we're looking at single element properties in this video. So we go to our single elements, 
and we're going to look at the rows curve, so we select that. And we're going to look at the energy versus volume curves for our three structures. So E1 is our primary structure. We're going to look at E1 versus A1, which is our energy versus volume curve. And the same thing for E2, which is our first secondary structure, which is BCC. And our second secondary structure, which was HCP. We can also look at elastic constants, vacancy and interstitial energies, surface energies, stacking fault energies, and all these other sorts of um, available options that we'll get into more in other videos. I will point out for right now that with the exception of these E2 and E3 curves, all of these other options will only be calculated for the primary structure that you have listed. So if we were interested in the elastic constants of, let's say, BCC aluminum, we would need to change our primary structure and, and then calculate the elastic constants for that. For this example, we're just going to look at the elastic constants of FCC aluminum. So we'll select our elastic constants there. And we can now see that those things have been checked so that when we run a computation, we will see um, those things displayed. Once everything's set up properly, we can just click Run Selected. And we'll just take a moment. And if everything's set up correctly, it should give you the outputs. And we see we have our three energy versus volume curves for FCC, BCC, and HCC, HCP aluminum for the potential that we've put in. And in this dialog box here, we get some more um, numerical information on those results. For our E1 versus A1 curve, again, this is energy versus volume for our primary structure, which is FCC. It tells us the minimum point, an energy of minus 3.35 EV, and a lattice parameter of 4.06 angstroms. And similarly for BCC and HCP. It also gives us information about the primitive cell. Um, this usually is going to be most relevant for HCP materials where the C over A ratio can vary. And we see the C over A ratio here for our HCP um, aluminum structures. We also see the elastic constants for FCC aluminum down here, C11, C12, um, and C44. Next, we're going to look at inputting calibration targets. This is information that you've gotten from other sources, either first principles or possibly experiment or the literature that you're then going to compare your potential results to and ultimately be trying to match your potential with. Previously, I have already made energy versus volume curves using um, DFT for FCC, BCC, and HCP aluminum. And so I'm just going to input those right now. To do that, we right-click again on aluminum, go down to enter calibration data for aluminum, pick the thing that we want to enter calibration data for. Again, first we're going to do FCC, um, which was our E1 structure energy versus volume curve. By default, it's only going to look for MATLAB files. Uh, mine is just a simple text document, so we need to change to look for all files. Go and find the file that's already been generated for FCC. Open it, and it generates those points down um, in our graph. Now we can compare our DFT results to our meme results. And very quickly, I'll do the same thing for BCC. And HCP. We can see that there's an offset between these. The um, DFT results and our potential results. And in a future tutorial, we can try and see if we can get those to match a little bit better. In addition, we can enter individual points. For example, if we know what the elastic constant C11 of aluminum is supposed to be. Um, I happen to know, I looked up earlier a value from DFT of 110.5. And so I can enter that in if we want to try and calibrate, for example, that C11 elastic constant. 110.5 gigapascals. And it records down here that that is a calibration target. 
and when it goes to calculate it, it tells us how far away we are um, from, from the input calibration value. In this case, we're already quite close. That will conclude this tutorial. Next time we will discuss um, some more complicated uses of this software, including um, parametric optimization and um, calibration of potentials.